you mentioned the, the COVID measures uh, and, uh, and and our times there. I, I said at the outset of, of, of COVID that I was more afraid of the measures taking to silence people and censorship measures that were taken than actually the virus itself. And I think I, 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 was, I was right in that approach. Uh, we saw those government interventions, the silencing of dissent in this field as being then transposed over those who were critical of the situation in Ukraine. There was just one narrative that was of loud, nothing more. Then we saw that sort of uh, carried over to the horrible current situation and the massacre and the genocide going on in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And so, I think on that, and not that take very long. I think that in this 14 year cyber that I've been involved with WikiLeaks, um, we saw very early on these indications that it would, this was incrementally creeping upon us. And Julian Assange was the, the uh, uh, lightning rod that, that, that took, took this measure on, with, which he was on the receiving end. He's not just the first journalist to be hit with the uh, indictment on the basis of the espionage act. Uh, the, this entire saga uh, had an indication of what was coming forth. Um, the, uh, the collateral murder video, which uh, is still disturbing me, I saw it before, it was released hundreds of times because I was working on it, uh, exposed a massacre uh, that uh, has, uh, nobody has answered for, which is full of human. That, of course, gave the rationale for murders in the future. And uh, it makes it easier for regimes to continue massacring people. That was the killing of a journalist there, uh, a brilliant photojournalist, Amir Nuruddin, and his, uh, his, his colleague, uh, Said Sma. More and more journalists was be were killed later because of that. So we are, we are seeing in this weekly saga, this, this continuous this sliding down that needs to come to an end. More journalists have been killed now in Gaza uh, proportionally than, than in the previous most deadliest uh, conflict for journalists, which was Iraq. Um, so it needs to come to an end. That's, that's why the fight for Julian Assange is not just for his freedom, which is very important, of course, but it's symbolic. It's symbolic of the need to put an end to this trend. To turn the tide, and that's why it will be so important to get him out, to get him on the stage with us in that fight to turn that horrible tide. We, because my God, we are in the twilight zone, and darkness is descending upon us, and we have no guarantee that there's going to be a tomorrow. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Stella, I think it, question two might be uh, helpful, perhaps, if you could summarise what could happen uh, over Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. What are the various outcomes <clears throat> that we should be prepared for? Well, I, I just uh, caution people not to be too uh, concerned about understanding the, the ins and outs of the legal process, because that's uh, uh, a bit of a distraction. Uh, the, the bigger picture, of course, is uh, what it means and whether this is the end of the road in the UK and what will happen if it's the end of the road in the UK. So uh, just to recap, uh, the, uh, the order to extradite was uh, given in, in uh, June last year or the year before and then um, and then Julia made an application to appeal and that application for leave to appeal was rejected by uh, SWIFT and now we're trying to get that uh, decision reviewed it's called a renewal hearing uh, two separate high court judges are being asked to disagree with their colleague uh, it's an uphill battle 
to win this round. Um, not because of the merits of our arguments, but because of the political nature of this case. And um, so we need to prepare for what will happen if it doesn't go his way. And that is the, that is the end of the road. There is simply no further appeal possible in the UK. There's no possibility to go to a higher court. Um, it's, uh, it's simply the, the final word. Of course, they could find in Julian's favor, and then it would go to a, he would actually be able to uh, present his arguments, because that will, that's what we're asking for, a, a, an appeal in which his, his arguments can be heard in full. Um, so this decision can come down very quickly. It can come down, uh, it could be the same day. The judges could say, well, um, We've already decided, but we'll write up our judgment and, and release it in one week's time, but our, our, our decision is here. Uh, we know in at least one case uh, that the UK has extradited within 24 hours of the final decision. What can we do? Well, Julian will uh, definitely research and uh, attempt to get the, U, uh, the EU, uh, sorry, the European Court of Human Rights to issue an order, a Rule 39 order it's called, um, to stop the UK in its tracks. Because once there's a final decision, then the, then the uh, extradition process begins. And as I said, um, in at least one other case, it's been almost instant. Um, the, the European Court of Human Rights, of course, has the power to impose a, uh, an order on the UK to stop. Uh, if you've been following the news, you'll know that the Sunak government has been um, playing politics with this obligation, and uh, uh, it's it's the same uh, it's the same rule that the uh, obligation that that uh, is at play in the Rwanda case, the Rwanda deportation case. Um, so we will seek that order. And if the UK violates, uh, if the UK um, does not obey it, it will be violating its, its um, legal obligations. But we've seen it violate the, its legal obligations before. So this is a critical moment in which um, the world needs to be watching and the people of London and, um, need to be present and watching and giving the, the clear message that they can't get away with it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Um, we just have time for, for one very quick question. We're unfortunately running out of time. Would you like to? My name is Camila LeBear. At first, I want to thank uh, Kim and Natalia for the film. It's very good that there is now a good overview from A to Z. Um, and I was wondering, um, I'm assuming a lot of people in Australia who maybe weren't as aware of all the details are be interested in, in knowing what their reactions was to you, or to you. And um, of course, Stella and, and Kristen asked a question. Uh, we do know a little bit about Victoria Sharp, um, because Kit Klamberg and, and others, that know Mark Curtis has written about it. But we don't know much about the circuit judge, Ross. Johnson, I believe. Do you know more about his background, his decisions? And uh, do you know already if Julian Assange will be present? At the, at the hearing. Thank you. Yeah, the, the reaction in Australia with this film has been uh, incredible so far. We did <laughs> the theatrical releases 28th of December in a little town driving, Mariba driving west of Cairns uh, in a population of 7,000. It just happened to be the first uh, population or community to, to sim similar to show it. Um, and uh, we, we turned up there on the night and drove in and uh, found there was 215 people in this small town. Here. And then ever since then, it's just blown off. Like we, we literally have about 100 cinemas now uh, running it or about to run it. The biggest chain in Australia Bent Cinemas has taken off, which is a huge surprise and a dream come true for this film. Um, 
tonight I'm having a, a, a meeting with the, uh, the programmer of the second biggest chain, Hoyt Cinemas. Um, and, uh, and, and it just seems like the sky's the limit with this film. That, and I don't think that's even that's much to do with the film. I think it's it's all down to Julian. Yeah. And I think it, this is the time when it, the world is ready to find out about this, ready to find out the truth. Um, so yeah, uh, New Zealand as well as many cinemas there, and then the UK theatrical release is 15th of March. So we're actually just pitching it out to the cinemas in home. And then as far as the, the response, I mean, we get similar response with the audience than we have tonight. Um, people are really enthusiastic about you know finding out that all of these important points that are made by these incredibly articulate people in the film and making sense of it all. Uh, people are really excited to sit down and actually just figure it out and what, you know learn more about this. Uh, and, and you know then they're telling their friends and most importantly the many many thousands of people that have been following the project the film for a few years uh, going to their cinemas requesting it and we're seeing that work. It, it can just take a few people to suggest it to your local cinema. So I really urge everyone to do that as we prepare for the theatrical release here in the UK. Please suggest it to your local cinema uh, and, and hopefully we can get it. Uh, it can be as successful here as it is uh, already in Australia. Thank and anything we know about the judges? Uh, okay. Just very briefly, sorry, I'm conscious. Yeah, very um, we don't know yet whether we'll be able to attend in person. Uh, yeah. And all the judges, I believe, declassified is also, um, you can publish one about uh, Johnson. Um, so stay, stay, look into that. And I, I just have to say that we have a, a Foreign Express Association briefing at the Special for Journalists. And I think there's a real change, actually. There were 130 journalists in attendance. It was bursting, the room was bursting. I spent two hours doing five minute interviews. Uh, there is now, I think, a lot of a lot of attention and there's an understanding that this is a uh, super training. Oh, yeah. I've spent way too much time in, in, in courtrooms in the UK uh, in this case, and uh, the, edit, the only thing that has been exposed to those proceedings was that it's uh, very hard to get any justice in that UK justice system. Uh, so this has been dragging on for so long. Just imagine that in April, we can see that in five years, Julia was arrested on April 12, and this has been dragging on, and that's one of the reasons. That's one of the, 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 that's the rationale behind it. This is the punishment. We keep dragging this on. Just imagine that it was September 22 that the uh, submission for a request for an appeal was sent in. Very well argued in hundreds of pages. It took 10 months, June last year, to get an answer. And I will agree from Justice. So, it was a two and a half days rant about, about complaints about how, many, how much material you had to read for these 10 months. Uh, and, and that denied. Now, eight months later, there is a request for review, review from these two justices. And I have to admit that uh, we, I am uh, pessimistic about the outcome that these two judges will disagree with this problem. But there is a uh, Quite obvious that the courts are uncomfortable with what's going on, and the growing attention, access to the court has been very difficult. Journalists are being denied remote access. It is limited to the video link journalists, for example, is limited to those who are in England and Wales for some reason. Uh, so this is absurd, and uh, they just don't want their eyes upon them. They feel uncomfortable. That's why your eyes need to be on them. We need more attention on the fatality that is going on. There. We will not get any justice. He's a political prisoner and a political pressure is needed to get him free. The justice need to understand that as well. Thank you. Thank you.
time uh, for taking any questions, but we will be hovering around, so, so please come over and, and talk. And we hope to see you all on Tuesday morning outside the court. We need you there. I'm going to pass very quickly no. over to Kip to say a final thank you. Thanks very Thanks much, Kristen and Stella, for joining the panel today, and for all of you lovely people coming out to support the show. Look forward to chatting with you in the foyer. Thank you. Well, you went and